Hello and welcome to another My SB Marriage video. You've seen it on TV, probably heard about it on social media, even perhaps had some friends talk to you directly about this. Partners who forget or don't do anything for Valentine's or anniversaries. Lots of people get upset by this. They feel like it means that their partner doesn't care about them or love them or do anything special or sweet for them. And they feel like an anniversary and Valentine's <laughs> are dates that everybody should remember because there's only like two dates a year that you need to recall. So why not just recall them? This may surprise some people. It may be an unpopular opinion. I may be a lone wolf in this regard. However, I do not care whether we celebrate our anniversary or not. In fact, I would prefer that we didn't. So hubby forgetting or not saying anything or not doing anything phases me zero. Care factor zero. In the first few years, we did celebrate these events, Valentine's birthdays and the date that we met. We either went out for dinner or there was a gift, probably rubies because he heard, I told him that I liked rubies and so he would get me things with rubies in them. Or a teddy and chocolates. There was one time I did sort of the rose petals from the bedroom all the way up the hall leading to the kitchen dining area where I had a nice candle lit dinner thing set up and he didn't even notice. <laughs> like he literally just walked on the roses and didn't notice they were there. He, I don't know where he was, like where his head was at. He obviously lost in a zone. <laughs> And he gets to the table and he goes, what's all this? And I'm like, didn't you see the rose petals? And he's like, no. So yeah, um, it didn't quite <laughs> pan out how I expected. So yeah, we did used to celebrate those kinds of days and they were nice at the time they were happening. They were a little bit sweet. I liked that he was at least doing something. You know, like sending me a bunch of flowers at work and things like that. That's nice. However, I soon got to a point where these one or two dates a year being the only time that he showed any kind of love or affection or anything started to irk me. I used to start to feel like if you can't be nice to me for the rest of the year, then what are we celebrating? Because there was not a lot of conversation or love or affection. I mean, we weren't sitting on the couch together snuggling and then sneaking a kiss or anything like this. It was very sort of cold and distant everywhere all the time, except for these important dates. And obviously from his perspective as well, he feels that I'm really rebellious and defensive and argumentative because I won't do all the things he wants me to do his way. So we were both getting agitated for different reasons, but still ending up agitated. So to get to a point where, you know, like two, three years in, who cares about Valentine's? I don't feel love or love you enough to do it. So eventually they just died. I even wrote him a poem <laughs> about how unloved I felt. Now, I warn you, <laughs> my poetry skills are amazing. <laughs> Here it goes. Do not touch what your words cannot describe. Do not buy gifts to show feelings you never confide. That's the poem. Pretty concise sums it up in two sentences. I was feeling very, very neglected and my once a year Valentine's gift and my once a year anniversary or birthday was just not enough to fill that void. There's a Tracy Chapman song, If Not Now, 
and I used to play that CD. And he heard that song and he asked me, is this what you mean? Like, if you're not going to show me now, then when? And I said, yes, yes, it is. So it was clever of him to put the CD or the song in connection with how I was feeling. That being said, it didn't make a difference. Nothing improved or got better, but it was interesting that he did observe that song was related to us. The closest I can explain is that I wasn't feeling joy or seen or heard or close. So in the end, the Valentines and anniversaries and things just got pushed to the wayside by the both of us. Probably about three years into the relationship, maybe four, he started saying, I don't believe in Valentines, which was a whole hundred percent flip around from when we were first courting and talking on the phone and writing letters to each other. He was saying he was Mr. Romantic and he loved all that sort of stuff. And about three years in, <laughs> the two of us are kind of at loggerheads, I guess, so much that he changed how he felt. And I can kind of understand where he was coming from because he thought being in a relationship was going to be easier than what it was. He thought you just got together and everything just fell into place and it didn't. There were all these hardships and conundrums and such that we weren't rectifying or knowing how to work out. So the both of us started to get really sort of agitated with each other and not really want to celebrate with each other. We didn't feel like celebrating in point of fact. A few years back we did do something for our anniversary simply because our son asked us when our anniversary was. He was wondering obviously how come my parents don't celebrate this anniversary I hear everybody talking about. And so he asked us when our anniversary was and it turns out it was coming up in a week or two. And he said, oh, you should do something for that celebrate the anniversary and my husband and I have kind of looked at each other like mm -hmm. okay <laughs> and we went out for dinner as a family all of us went and I was glad that my family was there because my boys are a little bit more talkative than my husband but essentially I'm really over going on dates that revolve around food. I am so sick of it. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to just say no to them completely because they're about the only thing we do together. <laughs> I laugh, but it's really sad. <laughs> and a few years back, we had this kind of funny situation He'd seen on Facebook a post that somebody had written, I think it was a wife who had written it to their husband. And it was this gushing, you know, thank you for 10 years, anniversary, blah, 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 couldn't ask for a better man, yada, yada, yada. Whatever it was, I never read it. He just talked about how gushing it was. He didn't use the word gushing. And he says, you never write stuff like that about me. <laughs> and I said, yeah, funny that. You don't write stuff about that, about me either. And that's that, conversation done. <laughs> He's not the kind of man who would ever do that. And he had actually said to me, don't post anything about me on Facebook. So <laughs> why would I? But also, what was I going to write? Thank you for 10 years of critiquing. Cheers to 10 more. Woo! <laughs> no, thanks. The point of fact is I do not and did not feel that way. Like I wanted to feel that way. I had read of my own friends posts on Facebook where they're saying the same things, you know. They've got this wonderful man, couldn't ask for a better man. You know, so close, so loving, so this, so that. And I'm dealing with this man who critiques me on a daily basis, loses his temper quite often, finds fault with not just the housework, I mean I call it a housework saga, but it was how I drove, it was how I parented, it was how I cooked, it was everything you could possibly imagine. There's this kind of man 
just follow me around going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it was not even nearly that I wanted to put some really loving wonderful thing on social media about him I was fairly agitated by that stage and it's a situation where him having so much negative things to say about me means he had a lot of negative things he was thinking about me. So he wasn't exactly eager beaver to be writing anything about me on Facebook either. If he was going to write something about me on Facebook, it would have been 10 years of rebellion, woo, cheers to 10 years more. You know, he was as equally as frustrated as I was, just for different reasons. Another complication to celebrating our anniversary as well is that are we celebrating the day that we met or are we celebrating the day that we got married? Because they're two different dates. I would have liked to have gotten married on the day that we met. It would have been easier. But it didn't happen. And now we have the date that we met and the date that we got married and one's longer than the other. So that kind of complicates it because neither he or I know which date that we should be focusing on anyway. So my husband has a family tradition where they'll go out when it's somebody's birthday or Mother's Day or things like that, Father's Day as well. And that's a family tradition that they have. They'll all get together, sit around this table, big massive family, out at a restaurant and they'll have a nice sort of meal together, a little bit of chatting and talking and such. And he has kind of brought that family tradition to this relationship. And I don't mind doing things like birthdays, Mother's Day and Father's Day. Because straight up, those dates aren't about him or I. They're not about us. They're not about love. They're not about our relationship. They're just a family tradition that we've been doing since we met him. Whereas celebrating he or and I... I mean, again, I say that I just didn't feel like celebrating. I got to a point, to be honest, and perhaps he was the same, where I didn't like him enough to want to go out. So if you recall that I talked about how he ignored me for three days because my son didn't take the rubbish out, let's say that that happened four days before Mother's Day, for example, or four days before my birthday which he didn't, but I'm just using that as one of the agitations that I was facing. Going to a restaurant with him after? Why would I want to do that? Like, it just didn't feel fun, joy, happy. I'm then kind of sitting at a table across from my enemy, almost. And to be honest, it did feel like that at times. Like we kind of started off at the start where we had that joyful moment of courting and such and, and things just got progressively worse until we were sort of smack bang in the middle. And I was so agitated by then, so angry, so resentful, so annoyed that this was my lot. Like how did I think I was getting this man and now I'm with this man? <laughs> and he's not nice to me, and in between the times that he's not nice to me, he's not especially affectionate or sweet or loving, and so I was just feeling very cross, very annoyed, and we would go out to restaurants and he'd want to hold my hand across the table and I'd be thinking, <laughs> like it just wasn't joy. So yeah, again I say that the word celebration was not how we were feeling. <laughs> Hence why it all fell to the wayside and hence why now we don't do anything about Valentines or anniversaries or things like this. And I don't care. I don't sit there on a Valentine's or our anniversary and wish we were doing something. I'm glad we're not. Especially since the only thing we'd be doing is food. And I have tried different things like organising dates that aren't about food. So for example, I organised an escape room, bowling, hikes, squash, just physical, more moving activities. And then when it's his turn to organise the next outing, 
he just goes straight to a restaurant and we're doing food again. So he's not reciprocating in the whole let's get away from the food thing. For him, it's just so much easier. Everybody eats. He likes to eat. We do like all different kinds of foods. Let's just go to a restaurant. So I don't really care that we're not celebrating. It kind of means a day of not eating. Woo! <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, anniversaries and Valentines. Are they important to you? Do they matter? How do you feel about those days and your partner remembering or not remembering? Do they remember? <laughs> Comment below. Would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it.